Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear colleagues. Some few slides about uh, epidemiology and current and normal uh, positive intravenous inotropics. As the results of three large acute heart failure registries, we now the left ejection fraction is less than 40% in near about half of patients with acute heart failure. And the admission systolic blood pressure correlates with in hospital mortality. So intravenous in inotropes are considered only patients with advanced heart failure, reduced ejection fraction, low blood pressure, less than 19, and who had symptomatic hypertension, the speed and the great feeling pressure, or unresponsive to intravenous vasodilators. So only five to 10% of this population with advanced heart failure and low blood pressure need to positive inotropic. This group is the worst for mortality, but fortunately, the incidence is low. The current inotropics uh, are digitalis that inhibits the sodium potassium pump, beta agonist that increase in intracellular CAMP, calcium synthase that increase mortality contractive force without increasing intracellular calcium release, and PDA inhibitors. However, many inotropic drugs failed to demonstrate beneficial clinical outcomes in patients with heart failure. For example, the vitamin causes neurohormonal activation, increased myocardial oxygen utilization, ventricular ectopia, and may lead to troponin release. In addition, the use of milivinone, a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, raises similar concerns as dubutamine, especially in patients with coronary artery disease, had worse outcome and increased mortality. Moreover, in the escape trial, use of inotropes was associated with a significant increase risk of all cause mortality. Pimobendan is an inotropic agent with phosphodiesterase inhibiting and calcium synthesizing effect that is correctly approved for use only in Japan. And the long term efficacy and safety as pimobendan for treatment of heart failure has not been established. And in an epoch study, the primary combined endpoint of sudden cardiac death, hospitalization for heart failure, and death from heart failure was less frequent in the pimobendan group but this difference was not statistically significant. Levosimendan in sorority tribe at 24-hour infusion levosimendan compared to dubutamine did not reduce all cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, or days out of hospital at 108 days. And in Revive 1 and 2, the evolution done had greater improvement in symptoms and lower BMP levels. However, with more frequent hypotension, cardiac arrhythmia, and numerically higher risk of death in the two trials at three months. Levosimendan is approved for intervenous use in some countries in Europe and Turkey also and South America. Longer term studies of patients with acute decompensed heart failure and systolic dysfunction do not clearly support a survival benefit. And the 2012 European Society of Cardiology High Effect Guidelines note the efficacy and safety levels of and are still uncertain. So, despite the short term symptomatic and hemodynamic improvements, Conventionally, atropics may increase long-term mortality, and we need new inotropic agents with different mechanisms of action that improve clinical outcomes. Without increasing cyclic AMP levels, worsening cardiac metabolism, 
producing proarrhythmia or myocardial damage. There are some candidates as new anatopic agents like uh, steroxime, myosin actuators, RNA-D receptor stabilizers, anagic modulators. I will uh, show uh, you some results of these uh, agents and answer they could be able to find this drug that prove clinical outcomes and mortality. A first in class luciotropic agent with a dual mode of action, myocardial contraction and relaxation effect, it increased myocardial contractility through either inhibition of sodium potassium ATPs, which improve calcium uptake of psychoplasmic reticulum. The horizon trial evaluated the effect of intravenous three doses of structure in patients hospitalized with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction, and the higher dose of Sturxin was an increase in systolic blood pressure and transient increase in cardiac index with the highest dose and a decrease in heart rate and diastolic and systolic volume without a change in ejection fraction. The endogenous ligand for angiotensin-like vine receptors present in endothelial, vascular muscle, and cardiac cells markedly increase cardiac contractility through the activation of sarcolemma, sodium and uh, hydrogen exchanger, which increase calcium. In patients with uh, congestive heart failure, intravenous epilin provides peripheral and coronary vasodilatation and increase left ventricular ejection fraction. However, clinical research with epilin is limited by its short plasma half life. The another group, a new class of pharmacological agents, cardiac myosin activators, directly targets the kinetics of myosin head. These agents increase the rate of effective myosin cross bridge formation, increasing the duration amount of myosin contraction, and improve myosin energy utilization with no effect of intracellular calcium or cyclic AMP. In this group, uh, omecantif mycobial infu infusion showed that dose and contraction related to increase systolic ejection time, stroke volume, and ejection fraction compared to placebo. In atomic AHF study that compared the placebo to omecantif showed that the highest dose of omecantif had a significant improve in dyspnea. The other group is strategy to restore cycloplasmic calcium cycling represent a novel therapeutic approach to increase cardiac contractility in patients with severe heart failure characteristics by reduced ejection fraction and low blood pressure and over expression of cycle 2 a activity improves systolic and diastolic function, cardiac metabolism, so we will reduce left ventricle remodeling and arrhythmias. In the cubic trial, intercoronial high dose admission of SALCA 2A as gene therapy strategy improved symptoms, functional status, left ventricle remodeling at one year, and significant reduction of cardiovascular events and mean duration of hospitalization. The second group in uh, this session, renaldin receptor stabilization that restored abnormal renaldin function and preserved contractile performance in heart failure models. The third, norelin one is synthesized in endothelial cells near cardiomyocytes. This growth factor increased cardiac mortality, improved cardiac function, and survival in heart failure. And this is a patient with NRG1. 
increased left ventricular ejection fraction, decreased left ventricle and systolic and diastolic volume that suggested an improvement in cardiac function, structure, and was well tolerated. Natroxyl HNO is an important molecule to regulation of vascular tone and other cardiovascular processes, a potent arterial and venodilatator. First in man evidence showed that reduced both left and right heart feeling pressure and systemic vascular resistance while increasing cardiac and stroke volume index. The last aging group, NIH metabolic modulators that several drugs switch energy metabolism from fatty cities to glucose oxidation have been investigated. One of them in Sinasquat in Compos uh, study showed that Sinasquat decreased blood pressure without improving dyspnea or cardiac index. So in my conclusion from past to future, because the decreased cardiac contract plays a central role in systolic heart failure with low blood pressure, it seems logical to treat systolic heart failure with positive enotopic agents. However, short time treatment with conventional intravenous inotropes improves symptoms and hemodynamic of acute decomposed heart failure patients. However, their benefits can be contracted by their serious adverse effects. At present, inotopic agents have not demonstrated the long-term benefit on clinical outcomes. And use of parenteral inotopic agents in hospitalized patients without documented severe systolic dysfunction, lower pressure, or impaired perfusion or evidence of significant depressed cardiac output with or without congestion is potentially harmful. And future new drugs must be evaluated in large-scale phase three trials to confirm that represent an effective and safer alternative to conventional inotropics. Now I'd like to uh, thank for your attention. You're talking more about novel positive inotropes. We have to bear in mind that in the simulation mode, <coughs> there are L type, T type calcium channels, and also increasingly we're understanding the role of the SR in simulation of those cells, uh, which, which may well contribute to calcium signaling in the simulation mode. So, what, what I'm wondering is this. The if you have a drug that affects calcium signaling in, in cardiac muscle cells, potentially it could also affect calcium signaling in the sinoatrial node, and that may or may not be a benefit. And I'm wondering whether some of the other drugs you've mentioned that don't involve calcium signaling offer a better future approach, <coughs> rather than drugs that also modulate potentially calcium signaling <laughs> in sinoatrial node cells, and therefore heart rate, heart rhythm. Absolutely, you're right. I agree with you. Uh, we still need uh, more uh, studies and uh, wait for novel uh, ionotopic other drugs. <laughs>